for most of my life been a big supporter of technology and the progression of technology and how it uh, can you know pull us as a society forwards and help um, you know people in vulnerable places and, and help kids connect with people from across the world but um, I remember uh, I think a few a few years ago I watched a TED talk all about uh, data and how it actually can can be detrimental to to sort of people in vulnerable positions because it it has bias that we can't control and potentially uh, I think the one I watched was a woman who wrote an algorithm that ended up being able to figure out if someone was having an uh, 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 mental break uh, uh, a bipolar episode and therefore understand that that person is more likely to sell uh, by sort of holidays or things spontaneously and sell a lot to them and it's sort of like this you can you can quite easily tell if someone's going through it but an algorithm doesn't go I'm not going to sell to that person because they're going through a, a manic episode instead I am going to sell to them because they're going to buy as much as they want from me um so it's complicated for me I think there's there's fours and there's against and that and then on the other hand I've had you know I've had algorithms suggest things to me that have been genuinely quite interesting and helpful um you know moments where I'm going thank you that is a video that I wanted to watch and that I would otherwise not have come across um and obviously in so many ways data has helped you know ease the frictions of life so I think that's what that for me is one of the really interesting questions is why why is data actually bad I I, I know that we've got the you might accidentally share my my data and infringe on my security and and I'll lose some money and we have the the introduction of bias which can um, in many cases put the um, put people in vulnerable positions at a, an even more disadvantage which are two very big problems beyond that why is data bad I think as an entity, it's not. It's a bit like, you know, yeah, exactly. food, fat isn't bad. Sugar isn't bad. And mm. When it's moderate. They have, they have physical measurable impacts on your life. They can shorten your life by X number of years. They can, you know, increase your cholesterol by X amount and cause you health problems. They've got measurable impact on your life. But maybe I, that's... I agree that data in many cases is bad. I just find the, the topic of, why it is. I, I think the answer is not a, a factual one, but a philosophical one of, of it's infringing on our personal uh, uh, human right to privacy. I don't think that's data, Freddie. I think that's just humans, because ultimately, like you say, data is a neutral thing. It's the humans using it. Because if we think mm. about another form of data, you know, think about something like the Gutenberg Press. And there was an uproar because everyone was like, what, you mean everyone gets a book? Or like when they created <laughs> the Bible and they were like, surely not. Now everyone knows what we're saying. I think even if we think it's bad, the genie is well and truly out of the box. We cannot reverse this. This is a, this is a forward. Mo we can't go back to being without the internet. I don't think unless something really catastrophic happens. Um, so it's about managing the humans behind the use of mm -hmm. that data. Yeah. Um, you know, legislators interviewing Mark Zuckerberg and just having no idea and that's why the legislation is so behind but I do think there needs to be legislation because as you said if you just ask companies to pretty please be kind they're not motivated by that they're only going to be motivated by market forces and there's only so ethical that market forces can be you need the leg legislation there to be the ethics you know like Josh was saying about let's consider the ethics of telling someone she's pregnant before she knows herself I've written down here, sex education. You should have data education. You know, it's... A lot of the problem, a lot of the solutions to the problem is around educating the public on how to deal with it because the industry isn't going to change. Um, and I, I, I did, I, I think it's a really interesting topic. And one of the sort of things that we figured out in that was that the problem is equally designing for the disinterested because people like us, probably already know <laughs> everything we need to know well not everything but you know we know how to somewhat stay slightly more um, um, safe in those situations but 
the people who aren't interested in it are the ones that are vulnerable and if they're not interested in it why are they going to read some education on it how do we push that out to them i think that's a big a big question there this is like climate change i think it is in the sense that the generation in charge now or even you know the generation coming up the you know, millennial generation for want of a better term i think because they we don't know what what having the internet from birth essentially what that has fully done we don't fully comprehend and so we're not protecting i think that's that's in that in that way it is like climate change because we don't fully understand the repercussions we're not adequately protecting the younger generation from themselves A smartphone and you don't give them an adequate you know talk on data hygiene but i think most people wouldn't be able to do that because they would not under, they would know less than their eight-year-old about the way the internet works and so it's kind of on the people in power now and the people who are going to be in power in the next 10 years to educate themselves on what that fully looks like. But that only works if you're, if you're having a dialogue with the younger generation. There are people out there doing A-B tests on how to get you to, what's the best way to get you to bypass terms and conditions? Where do we put the button? What color do we make the button? How long do we make it? How many pages do we make it? All this work is going into how do you get someone to instantly just go, I don't care. Coded bias film where it was algorithms, guess what? They're not, they're not, you know, free of bias. They go off and they find it. And we discussed this in last month's virtual meetup about travel and this idea that there will be eventually be cars that just roam and you call them like taxis and you get in it and you get out of it and that's what it does and wouldn't that be amazing and we were discussing it wouldn't that be great but then algorithmically my suspicion is that if we get to that point they will just circulate around rich areas and the company will go we don't control it it just goes where there's demand and it's like yeah but the demand comes from the fact there's rich people who can afford it but actually the people who need it are the people who are disenfranchised and then our, you know, our rich poor divide gets bigger and then, and all these things that we create, hoping that they're going to make the world better, then actually end up fueling this, this divide that actually is, is detrimental to hum humankind. And what you were saying about chess move that humans couldn't compute, like my kind of instinctive response to that is deep terror. <laughs> And I don't know if that's just because I have control issues or something, but I, the idea that, um, that, that, you, and I, I can't, I read a story about, I think, was it two AI systems where they started talking to each other and then eventually they found a way that humans couldn't translate what they were saying. And so they had to, I mean, my memory of the story, they had to kind of, you know, pull the plug or something to stop them communicating and doing God knows what. So which is which all sounds very sci but obviously that's the thing that actually happened so yeah so i'm quite conflicted too the humans are losing control of the ai in terms of its very purpose is to go off and learn and do its own thing and there will come a point you know when they released the the twitter bot that was reading trump trump tweets and became racist within like four days they didn't go out and go let's make a twitter a racist bot they went let it do what it does and it 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 started moving away from where they started and then you your mobile provider has mm -hmm. the the most unfiltered access to your life they they are more than google will ever have on you because they have everything that goes in and out of your phone pretty much your you know when you go home what it connects to in the house what that wi-fi is connect to in the house what yeah, they've got literally everything so um mm -hmm. basically said i'm not scared of anything because nothing is going to have more data on me on them. yeah i think i think from a corporate point of view there's a lot because we can't see the upper echelons and actually what you don't realize is apple and google and amazon are buying well are buying lots of companies all the time. And you, what you don't realize is that when you give one piece of information here, it's then connected to all this stuff. There's maps of who you are. And you think, oh, I'm just giving away 
my name. I'm just giving away my date of birth. I'm just giving away this, 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 this. And actually there's these big conglomerates up here that own a lot of what you have. And Amazon's probably the most powerful company in the world. You've got Google, but then, and people think Google because, you know, they're very front facing, but AWS, Amazon Web Servers, powers 70% of the internet. So everything is basically Amazon. And it's scary to watch regulators try and talk to Silicon Valley when, you know, when uh, Mark Zuckerberg was in, in the Senate being questioned. And there's, you know, people who are out of touch kind of going, so, so what's a Facebook? And it's just like, how are you the ones interviewing him? And then this shouldn't be who's interviewing someone who's at that at the top of their game. You know, they might, you know, in the area, in the idea of cognitive diversity, they might actually ask a very pertinent question that kind of coming at it from such a weird point of view and kind of going, I don't know. That security has to be impenetrable because once it's all connected, you've got access to, you get through one door and you've got access to all of it. And the, the idea that China now has a quantum computer that can undo security levels that we've invented before as being unhackable. We should be able to sell our data. It shouldn't just be that you opt in, you should sell it to people because it's the new diamonds, it's the new gold, it's the new, you know, data is the, has now been deemed the most valuable substance on the planet. It's not real, it's ones and noughts, but it's, it's the most valuable thing in the world. Because I think in the past I've been like, oh, you know, my phone's listening to me, but I don't say anything of interest anyway. But that is uh, a very privileged view to take because I'm not someone who's constantly scared of being, uh, you know, being at the wrong end of the law or whatever.